Okay, so let's have a look at a partially homomorphic encryption using RSA. So a homomorphic encryption is a dream when it comes to privacy, where we could operate on numbers with, in a ciphered way without actually revealing the values. So in this way, we could, Bob and Alice could give the values to a data processor, and they would cipher the values, uh, the data processor could then operate on them and give the cipher value back and there's no way that the data processor would know what the values were that they were operating on. So the operations might be add, subtract, multiply and divide but we can also have logical operations, uh, boolean operations and so on. So it could be possible for us to create a completely anonymized infrastructure for our data. So in this case we have Bob and he has a value and so has Alice. Uh, they cipher them and then we can add them together and then we can decrypt. There are some ho fully homomorphic encryption methods such as DGHV which was produced by Gentry, BGV, NTRU and Learning with Errors. These methods here are uh, typically the quantum robust methods that we have that are naturally fully homomorphic. Along with this we have partially homomorphic encryption as we'll see RSA, Paleo and LGAMO. So let's quickly cover the RSA method. So RSA method has been around for at least 40 years and is still going strong. And the strength of it is to take two very large prime numbers and to create a, a modulus on an n value. And it's very difficult to be able to factorise back to find the two prime numbers which made the n value. So we'll take quite small values, 11 and 3. So we calculate our n, our modulus, as p times q. In this case, it's 33. We then work at a value called phi, which is p minus 1 times q minus 1. So in this case, it's 10 times 2, which is 20. And now we pick a value of our encryption key so that it does not share any factor with phi. So the factors of phi are 2, uh, 4, 5, 6, and so on. So we can't pick those values. So the values we can pick are 3, 7, and 9 because E will not share any factors with phi. So let's pick 3. We pick 3. Now what must happen to be able to make sure the mass will work is that D, the decryption key, times E, the encryption key, mod N, remember mod N is the remainder of a, of a divide, is equal to 1. So it's quite easy in this case, D times 3, mod N, we could go through the different values, but 7 times 3 is 21. Mod n, mod of 20, gives us 1, so our decryption key is 7. If you want, you can go through uh, some, uh, some different values. Okay, so we can try a, a few values here. So there's a p and q value. We can work at n from there, and there's phi. We pick a value of 3, which does not share a factor with phi. Work at the d value. And then we can encrypt. So the encryption process to take our message, and we raise it to the power of our encryption key e, and we take mod n, and then to decrypt, we take the encrypted value, raise it to the power of D, and then take mod N, and we get a message back again. If we try with a message of 4, an E value of 3, as we calculated, D of 7, and N of 33, let's do a quick calculation. So our encryption is equal to 4 to the power of 3 mod 33, so that's 31. We'll now take 31 to the power of 7 mod 33 and hopefully we'll get our value back which is 4, which is correct. Okay, so it, it works out. So that's the RSA method. So 
how come we can do partially homomorphic encryption with RSA? Well, it's all to do with logarithms. If we take our cipher of one value, v1 to the power of e mod n and v2 to the power of e mod n, then we multiply them together. Because we're using the mods of prime numbers here, it is possible for us to operate on the values separately and we can take mod n at any time. But we can bring them together, v1 to the power of e times v2 to the power of e. So that's a bit like 2 to the power of 3 times 3 to the power of 3. So we can group together and that becomes v1 times v2 to the power of e mod n. So let's give that a try and see if we can get it to work. Okay, so I've picked some values for an E value and a D value which should work and for an N value. And you can see here 5 times 6 when we cipher it we get this and this. We basically multiply them together and then we get that and then when we take uh, if we want to do the calculation, if we take 2604, 2604 to the power of a decryption value, which is 019, and take mod of 33337, we get 30. Okay, so that's... Uh, that shows us that uh, it works. We'll try another value here. Eighteen and six, and that should give us a hundred and eight. Again, if we want to check that, so we can go through uh, the ciphers. So the cipher is um, two five six two times 2086 and again we take the mod which is 3337 and the value that we get is 1795 we'll take 1795 raise it to the power of the decryption key which is 1019 and we'll take the mod of 3337 and hopefully we'll get 108 which is correct so that's 18 times 6. So that works fine. And But what happens if we now look at divide? Well, divide is slightly different. With this, we take our ciphers, and then now we're going to divide the ciphers together to give us our result. OK, so it's v1 divided by v2 to the power of e. And it works. And what we do is we take the inverse mod of V2, the inverse of V2 mod N. So we find this value and then we multiply that by the V1 value and that's the equivalent to dividing. So the inverse, inverse mod is this function here. Okay, 53, and the inverse of 53 mod 120 is 77. And what we do is we use the extended Euclidean algorithm to be able to work out the inverse. So it's the inverse of n mod p. And this is how we would do it in Python. Okay, so uh, for a value that we might have, say we have 5 mod uh, 41, and the result is 33. So it's that value that will actually, uh, we take the cipher value and then we'll take the inverse of it. So let's that give that a try with some code. Okay, so this time what I've got is some code. I'm going to cipher the values. And then, rather than cipher 1 times cipher 2, mod n, I'll take cipher 1 times the inverse of cipher 2, mod n, multiply them, and then take mod n again, and then I'll decipher it, and hopefully it will work. 
So it only does an integer division. So in this case it's 12 divided by 6 gives us a result of 2. So again, we'll just check that. So this cipher 1 is 760. And what we need to do is find the inverse of 2086. So it's the inverse of 20, 2086 mod 31, sorry, 3337. That gives us 1115. 1115. So we'll take 1115. Multiply it by 760, which is cipher 1, and then we'll take mod of 3337. Okay, so that gives us 3139. 3139, and then we'll decrypt it with our decryption key, which is 1019. And we'll take the mod of 3337, and the answer is 2. So that has shown us that the divide actually works. 12 divided by 6 is 2. We can do the same. We'll do 18 divided by 6. The answer is 3. We'll try some different keys. And it still works. 110 divided by 11 is 10. Okay, so homomorphic encryption really is uh, an amazing uh, method and it would allow us to be able to process values, to find attestations and so on without actually revealing the core data. Okay, thank you.